and it was built in Gloucester, Massachusetts, which is a, a town in, in the, on the coast of Massachusetts in, in a part called Cape Ann. I, I grew up in Massachusetts, and so I know the um, area pretty well, but this organ was here before I arrived in Greenville. And basically, you know, it takes a couple of years to build a, a big organ like this, because you have to have carpenters working on all the wood, you have to have pipe makers who are making all the pipes, and what you see here is just, you know, a, a visual representation of what's just a handful of about 3,700 pipes of all different shapes and sizes made out of wood and metal. So there are many, many different types of uh, pipes in there. So let me just turn on the organ. And let me start by saying, do any of you play the flute or the recorder or any other kind of stuff? Well, basically, um, you know, John Shaw has often said the organ is like a, a bunch of upside-down recorders, you know. And if you look, if you look at these pipes, you'll see that it's basically like a whistle. And and the, the organ pipes work on a, on a large scale, just like any kind of a whistle, except instead of me standing here blowing into it like a flute or a, a clarinet or anything like that. It's a lot of wind that's being generated by a big turbine motor, which is under the floor, which um, uh, produces all the wind. And so not to get too technical, because I don't want to confuse anyone, and if anyone has any questions, just raise your hand. You can get time. as technical as you want. Oh, really? It was <laughs> awesome to me. turbine under the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, um, what happens is there are, um, you know, to simplify a little bit, three main uh, systems to, to make this organ work. You have a wind supply, which is, you know, as I say, is uh, uh, produced by a motor, a blower under the floor. And then you have uh, a wind chest in which the wind um, is stored under pressure. And then you have the um, console here, which controls uh, where the wind is going at, at what time. And so this, this is like a computer keyboard in some ways, even though it's, it's much more mechanical than just a, a technology in terms of a computer. But so once you have this wind coming up from the floor, it's, it's, it's directed by all these little pipes, uh, channels, you know, or wind trunks to all different parts of this organ case, way up to the top, all in the middle along the back, and the air is, is stored inside wind chests. They're like boxes, but the difference is, is the wind is kept under pressure in there. So, um, you know, to, uh, I'm trying to th think of a, uh, like a, if you have a pressure cooker or a, or a, um, or a um, crock pot or a balloon, sort of. Yeah, that's a good, uh, actually, analogy. The, the, the air is trapped in there, and then um, when you play the different keys, it allows the wind to be, the pressurized wind to be released, and then it goes up through the pipes in, in order to, to produce the sound. So that's basically what you have. You have a wind supply, you have a place to store the wind under pressure, and then you have the, um, the actual pipes which the... Um, so the uh, majority of the pipes are hidden back there. Yes. We only see a few of the pipes. Right, yes. And I, I can, you, know, you can see the in, inside of the organ. So that's that. Then we have this, this um, beautiful console here. The console is like the keyboard that you type on, really. And um, so what happens here is um, the organist sits here, and this is how the organist controls everything. And, and the, um, the, the organist is often called the king of instruments. Yeah, have you heard about this? The king of instruments. We call this organ the duchess as a, as a fond um, uh, anachronism. Sort of. But um, the organ is the king of instruments because well, if you play the clarinet and you play the, what, the viola and the, the violin, the organ um, is almost like an orchestra unto itself. We have sounds that are like trumpets and tubas and oboes and clarinets and um, flutes and strings and everything. And it's not, not that we think that, you know, if a flute player or a, a clarinet player heard the organ playing, or even a violin violinist would think, um, they would be fooled into thinking that it's a violin playing and, and uh, not an organ. It's not exactly like that. But the sounds are imitative in many cases of orchestral instruments. You know? <coughs> so let me just say that um, um, on the organ, 
you have two different types of, of pipes. Now in the orchestra, you have your strings and your brass and your percussion and your woodwinds and all these kind of things. On the organ, we really only have flute, F-L-U-E, not flute, but flu. Then we have reed pipes. And sound is produced um, in two categories, flues and reeds. But all of the different orchestral sounds can be produced this way on the organ. It just depends on the shape of the pipe, the length of the pipe, how fat the pipe is, you know, um, what the pipe is made out of, whether the pipe is open or whether it has a cap on the top. You know, there's so many different shapes of pipes. So what you see here are just normal open metal pipes. These are open metal flue pipes. And they, what you see is what you get. It's all right there. But when you have reed pipes, which on the organ, the reed pipes um, are, produce your trumpets, your clarinets, any brass or woodwinds, you know, that's on a reed pipe. Those types of pipes have actually two parts. They have a, a bottom part, which is a, called a boot, and inside the boot are some little things like, on the clarinet you have a reed uh, that helps to produce the sound, or if you play the saxophone, you have a reed. That's all contained in this little boot, and then you have a resonant. Now, you had a question. Uh, how many feet can those uh, pipes up there be? Okay, excellent question. Um, organ pipes, depending on um, what sound and what um, pitch they want to sound, can, can be anywhere from 32 feet high to about, um, about six inches and as skinny as a pencil, you know. And what do you think, if you had to guess, do you think the a, a, a skinny little pipe is going to make a small pipe makes a low sound, or do you think a big pipe makes a low sound? Big, big pipe. Yes, yeah, good. The big pipes. <coughs> what was that? <laughs> I thought, um, we talked about that in the car with Anna, so that she could answer your question. <laughs> okay. Yes? So b basically, you answered correctly. When you have a um, when you have a very large round pipe, you know, it makes a big sound. And when you have a very small skinny pipe, it makes a very small sound. And so to go a little farther in answering your question, if I play some of these the pipes here, these are the ones that are located directly in the facade and you can actually hear them. See that one's right over here in the middle. organ can sound even lower than that. It can sound as low as this, which is a sound that's so low that you almost um, feel it more than you hear it. Listen to this, or hear, feel this. It's, it's a very low sound. It's, it's almost not even audible. It's very, very low. So that's, that's one thing. Now, uh, some of the smallest pipes can sound as high as this. Can you even hear them? That can take some time. Now, having said that, some pipes are very stable and they don't need to be tuned that often, you know. So, um, but other pipes are very sensitive and they need a lot of attention. So typically when an organ tuner comes in, maybe once every few years or something, you might give the, the whole organ a total tuning and regulating and that kind of thing. But generally, we have the organ tuned maybe four times a year um, before concerts or um, before the holidays and that kind of thing so that it's in its best tune. Most of it stays in tune. It's not like when you play the violin or, or something, you, pick up, you have to tune it every time, right? And sometimes you have to tune it several times while you're practicing, I guess. But the organ is pretty stable. It's not, you know, it doesn't go out constantly. But often the, some of the reeds do. Some of the trumpets and things, they're, they, they're very sensitive, 
to humidity and temperature differences. And so today we're having a very cold day, whereas yesterday we had a very warm day. And so the, the organ you know, um, changes because a lot of the parts are made out of wood and metal. And just uh, if any of you have ever had a, your bedroom door get stuck in the summer when it's so humid and, and the wood swells, and like, oh, I can't get this door open. It's the same kind of thing. I mean, the, the, the weather affects it. And so um, if you have a wooden pipe, sometimes it, if it's really hot and humid, it starts to expand, you know? Whereas in the winter, when it's really, really dry, and cold, the wood starts to shrink. And it's just a, a little bit, but it actually makes a big difference. So basically what the, what the organ tuner has to do, of course he has very special training, but he has to come in and one pipe at a time, he has a little tool, and depending on what type of pipe it is, um, he, uh, he adjusts it by tapping it a little to make the pipe a little shorter or to make it a little taller because it's really the length of the pipe that makes, makes the pitch. You know, a, a longer pipe has a lower pitch and a shorter pipe. So if the, if the pipe is a little too flat and it needs to go higher, then he, he makes the pipe a little shorter so that it sounds a higher pitch. And if the pipe is too sharp, he'll make it a little higher. Now, it's hard to see this, but, um, you know, these pipes are on the back side is a tuning scroll and it's hard, you know, it's hard to see from here. Um, but notice how these pipes have little ears on the front. You see the little ears around the mouth there? Those are, that's what's called the mouth and the ears. Sometimes those are, are manipulated as well to help in the tuning of the pitch. Now, so any other questions now before I go ahead with the different types of sounds? Yes. Did you notice when you um, played one of those that one of those big ones that you heard the door crack? Yeah. Crack? Yeah. You know, it's because the um, um, some of the the uh, sounds that are so low they actually vibrate. You know, I mean, all sound is produced with um, with sound waves that are invisible to the eye. We don't see them uh, when you take the physics courses and all. You know. <laughs> All these things involving fractions and numbers, you know, right? Um, you may learn those kind of things, but you know, sound waves go up and down, and and you know, you can you can't see them, but just as the way you know the, the, the rate at which you see things and the rate at which you hear things are always different. For example, um, I always like to see airplanes flying up in the sky, but sometimes you hear a jet engine. If you're ever, if you're ever playing out in the backyard or something, and then you hear this. The air, you think, oh, I hear an airplane, but I don't see an airplane because the, the, the speed of the sound, you know, travels at a different rate. So you start to hear the airplane, and then a little while later, you say, oh, there's the airplane. And you realize, hmm, that's funny, it sounds like it's over there, but it's because the, the sound travels at a different speed. And that all has to do, I guess, with the amplitude of the sound waves and everything. I mean, I probably am oversimplifying because I'm really actually not that smart. I don't know that much about fractions and sound waves. You are smarter than me. Because I'm only seven. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? That's an excellent question. But I did, and that's, that's something that, as I was saying, sometimes with those really low pipes, you feel them more than you actually hear them. And it gives a tremendous gravity to, to the organ. Now, um, before I go ahead with the different colors of the stops, I wanted to say, why do we use organs in church? And this is, this is a good question. I mean, the organ has been associated with its use in religious services for hundreds of years. And um, of course, the organ, though, is much, much older as an instrument than just hundreds of years. The organ goes back to, to Greek and Roman times, but in a different form. And organs weren't really used in churches at that time. And in fact, there weren't even Christian churches at, at that time. But actually, organs were used, um, they, they were called a hydraulis, and it was kind of a, a water-pumped machine that could play a few notes with some levers and this kind of thing. And water under pressure was used to, to force wind up into these pipes. And they, they were uh, supposedly had the most awful, dreadful sounds, more like an alarm <laughs> than a musical <laughs> instrument. But they used to use them like in the gladiator games, you know. Uh, someday when you get old enough, you might learn about the, the, the ancient Rome and the Colosseum and the, um, and the gladiator games. And maybe when you get really old enough, you might see the movie The Gladiator or something, which is historically kind of interesting, but you want to wait a little while for that. 
But that being said, that they used these games, they used these organs for the signals, and they would use them in these games that they used to play in ancient Rome, you know, and so, um, and even in, in Greece. And sometimes these were sent as gifts, and there are pictures of organs, you know, on ancient pieces of pottery and ancient coins. So we know that the organ is really very old, but it became really the official instrument of the church. And I think the reason why, and the organ has a tremendous capacity, um, because it can do so many different things. It has a capacity to express all kinds of different feelings. Like if you think as human beings, sometimes you're very happy, sometimes you're very sad, Sometimes you're a little confused. Sometimes, you know, we have all kinds of different emotions. The amazing thing about the organ is because of it, it has so many colors, because it has so many different sounds, it's so capable of expressing the whole depth and breadth of human emotion. You know, if you want to feel fear and terror, um, you know, this organ can do it, you know. And if you want, if you're looking for something very moving and, and uh, you have so many capabilities that you can do on this organ, not just depending on what keys you're playing in, but what types of sounds that are used. And so let's review those sounds now. Um, we have flutes. I want you to repeat after me now. So I'll say four, these are the four tonal, ca ca tonal categories. It's going to be flutes, reeds, principles and um, strings. Okay, so now you say it. Flutes, reeds, principles, and strings. Good. Now, on this organ we have all kinds of flutes and all kinds of different pitches. We have flutes that are very, very low. We have flutes that are just at a normal pitch like a piano plays, like a concert pitch. And we have very high pitch flutes. That's the amazing thing about the organ because you can have a few stops but you can begin to stack them up, and that's what makes the organ sound so interesting. When you play the piano, and the piano is a very beautiful instrument, but when you play a note on the piano, it plays one note, that's it, you know? You play an A, that's what you get, just A. But on the organ, you can hit one key, and you can have this A, and this A, and this A, and that A, and that A, by just raising the, and that all depends on the length of the pipe. So, for example, Here's one of the most beautiful pipes on the organ. It's a harmonic flute, eight-foot harmonic flute. And it sounds like this. Oh boy, wait a minute here. Wait a minute. I had another stop. Hold up. Here it is. Very, very beautiful stop, right? Very beautiful. Now, if I have a pipe that's eight feet long, meaning that the lowest note on the keyboard sounds from a pipe that's eight feet long, and then the, the next note is a little bit shorter, and the next note is a little bit shorter, and the highest note is quite a bit shorter. But on the organ, I also have a four-foot flute, so when I play this pitch here, on the middle of the keyboard, and if I play that instead on a four-foot stop, meaning that the lowest note on the keyboard sounds from a pipe that's four feet long, it sounds one octave higher than that. So if I play the same exact key, listen to how much higher it sounds. See, my hand is in the exact same place that it was. And if I play one that's on a two-foot stop, it's even an octave higher than that, but my hand is still just where it was. You see? So, that's the wonderful thing. If I play on a 16-foot stop, it sounds an octave lower. A 16-foot stop means that the lowest pipe on the keyboard sounds from a pipe that is 16 feet long. And here's, here's a 16-foot pitch. So the wonderful thing on the organ is I can combine them all together on one single note. A 16-foot pitch, and then an 8-foot pitch, and a 4-foot pitch, and a 2-foot pitch and you can get this wonderful tower of sound. And that's what makes the organ so grand there. Don't, don't tip over there. <laughs> okay, so here's our eight foot pitch. Four foot, with it, and with the two, and with the 16. So now we have a whole layer of sound.
despite playing one note. Now imagine on the piano what you'd have to do. You'd have to play oh, all these octaves. <laughs> but you don't have to do that on the organ. So that's one of the things. So those are some of our beautiful flutes. Another one here. sound a little different. They all have a little bit of a different color, you know? Some are a little smoother sounding, some are a little more um, chiffy sounding, you know? Um, a very smooth flute is this nice harmonic flute. It, it's so smooth, listen. But listen to this little chord de nuit, little, little flute. It has a little more chiff to it. It's almost like if you're sneezing. Or the bird chirping. Listen. Can you hear the speech of it? It has a little bit more, should we call that a chip? Here's the difference. Smooth. And a little chip. There's a little bit more of a crust to it, you know. Anyway, so um, that's the flutes. That's the first category. All these different bits. Then we have the strings. Now, unfortunately, Today I can't demonstrate the most, one of the most beautiful sounds, which is the string celeste, because I have a lack of power to the swell division of the, of the organ due to an electrical fault, which is supposed to be corrected by the end of the week, so you can just imagine. But you know when you play in a string orchestra, sometimes strings have a beautiful shimmering sound. You know, strings don't just sound very harsh, you know, but they often they shimmer. And we're able to get that on this organ. I wish I could demonstrate it because it's one of the most beautiful sounds, but you get that by having two sets of pipes right near each other. And those two sets of pipes are tuned a little bit intentionally out of tune from each other. And just ever so slightly, a little bit flat or a little bit sharp. And so that gives you, when you pull on both of them together, a very beautiful undulating sound, a sound that wavers and shimmers a little bit. And it imitates the shimmery effect of the um, strings here. Hello there. Okay, so. I... <laughs> and then, um, so that's that. Now, let's go on to, to, to the strings. Oh, yes. Oh, I'll tell you all about that. I'll come back to that in just a minute. So, I guess. They play a little note. Soon. Soon you will. Soon. Okay. <laughs> so, anyway, now, um, so we have the uh, strings. And the string sounds are sound a little bit thinner. A little bit thinner than the flutes. Because the strings, you know, you just think of how wide the string is. It's just, it makes a very bright sound, doesn't it, the violin? So this is kind of a string sound on here. See? Now, we know that it's not a violin making that sound, but it kind of sounds thin like a violin. You know what I mean? It doesn't have a big, fat sound. Okay, so that's... that's. Then we have the principles. Now, principles are a sound that's unique to the organ. No other instrument makes the principal sound. When you hear this sound, you think about a church organ, right? This is what a principal sounds like. You can recognize that sound sounds like a church organ. And same thing with principles. We have all the pitches available to us. Um, we have them at eight foot pitch, and then at four foot, available there. That's the third category. So we've heard the flutes, we've heard the strings, now we've heard the principles. Last one are the reeds. Now on the reeds, um, as I said, on the organ that includes your brass instruments. So not just your oboes, your clarinets, things like that. Also trumpets, tubas, those are all considered reeds on the organ because of the way the, uh, the pipe is. So again, unfortunately, you can't play the oboe or the bassoon for you because 
I have that lack of power to the swell right now, which is terribly irritating. But on the grate, we have some wonderful trumpets here. Here's kind of a mellow sounding trumpet. Kind of a lighter one. Now we have a big French sounding trumpet. Notice the difference. We heard how some of the flutes were very smooth flutes. Some were a little more chiffy. Well, we just heard a nice smooth trumpet. Now this is a nice brassy trumpet, big fiery trumpet. See that you can hear the difference here. One's a little bigger and fatter and brighter. Um, then we have, um, again, we can have these at all different pitches. We have 16, 8, and 4. So here's our 8 foot. And then with the 4 foot and the 16 foot. You can make quite a bit of sound just from those three sounds. Someone had a question. Did you have a question? No question. Okay. All right, so that's that. Then we have kind of a clarinet stop here. This is actually called a crumhorn. It's not exactly a clarinet. It's actually more of a, of a Baroque type of a reed called a crumb horn, but it sounds different. Here's what this sounds like. It's a very interesting throaty type of a character to it. You know? And then we have on this organ a big tuba, which is a stop that's very good for ceremonial occasions. It sounds like this. also have in the feet, of course oftentimes the feet play the lowest notes, we have some big pedal reeds. And the pedal reeds uh, give a great gravity. So we have a passauna, which is a German reed for like a bassoon. It's a very low sound. And that has a kind of a, even though it's a reed, it has a round richness to it, you know. Compared to this French bombard, which is a big fiery trumpet. See, that one is more brass, you see? And then we have a 32-foot reed. This is the, one of the biggest, loudest stops on the organ, so get ready for this. Here it is. Okay, that, that pipe is made out of wood, and it's 32 feet long. Now, you don't use that you're not going to write a piece for triangle and 32-foot bombard, you know, or something like that. It's, it's not intended to be used as a solo stop, but what it does is under the full organ, you hear a new sense of gravity and weight. You, you wouldn't use it all by itself because it would sound terrible, but given its, its role on the organ, and this relates to the question that you were asking, well, how do you know where these stops go? Well. We have three keyboards and we have a pedal board to be played by the feet. And that's why I'm wearing these shoes. They look almost like dance shoes or something, but organists wear special shoes because they're nice and smooth on the bottom so that you can feel and slide around where you are. And they have a built up heel so that you can play with the toe and the heel without getting, you know, with them um, with added precision, you know, and so it's amazing. So that's why I use these shoes and you can see they're well worn because I, play the organ a lot and practice a lot. What you must do is practice when you play an instrument. You have to practice a lot every day. But they're nice and smooth and they have this heat. Anyway, but both of the shoes I wear out in public. You know, I don't wear these shoes out. In fact, I never wear them outside because you don't want to get stones on them and you don't want to get them wet because they will be sticky. And then they'll stick to the pedals and you don't want them to stick. You want them to slide. You know. <laughs> so, Basically, I know where the stops are because I play this organ all the time. But the stops up here are for the swell. That's the top keyboard. The stops over here are for the positive, which is the middle. And the stops over here are for the great, which is down here. And these stops here are for the pedal. And so you, you, I just get to know where they are. But they're all organized in groups. Pedal stops, swell <coughs> stops, positive stops, and, and great. And all the manuals have a name depending on what they do. Now, one might ask, you know, where's the volume, you know? Where, where, 
where's the, uh, how do you turn up the volume? Well, it's not so simple on the organ. It's not like when you turn on the radio and say, oh, put it up to 23, you know, or something like that. Or